Welcome to the Growth Zone. I am Christian Bartsch and I have a really interesting session for you today. So today we have one key topic and that's how to filter out the noise of social media so that your energy is 100% on your business. We will be looking at social media is a big distraction for entrepreneurs so that they need to cut out the noise. Secondly, how can you get more focus in your day so you will generate business strength? And we finalize with what you need to focus the next 18 months in your business so that it will continue to grow instead of being beaten up by haters and energy vampires. Let's go in for it. So let's look at today's topic. So um, you'll see that in social media, and I mean anything from Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, and all this other kind of stuff, Snapchat, Pinterest, all these different places. There's so much stuff going on and they are a great distraction for you, especially if you are trying to start your business or adapt your business to the current situation. Yes, we need to be watching social media. We need to be understanding what's happening, where are trends going, how are they actually affecting our business. And what are they saying about our business out there in the social media? But the thing is, you have to think as well on one core thing. What is your key audience? Are you a B2B business? Business to business? So your client audience are companies? Or are you in a B2C targeting clients, consumers? Let's say consumers is a better word. Um, so... Or are you targeting governments? Maybe you're providing services for governments or any kind of um, government-like organizations. Then that's, of course, a totally different kind of piece of cake. But we still, even then, we still have to keep an eye open and watch and see and listen what's happening out there. Nevertheless, the key thing is we can get very, very distracted we can uh, waste a lot of time and energy. And yes, sometimes it's nice to maybe watch a few videos and just to chill out. But that's something for the evening. But you don't want to start that in the morning already when you're then uh, getting really distracted. Instead of that in the morning, you should be mind feeding, maybe reading a book, listening to a podcast or anything like that, or in both um, research stuff and that, and then start your planning doing your development, any kind of things, and depending on how your daily schedules are the best and adapted to it. But try to avoid sitting all day in social media. That's the thing. It's it's so so funny when you look at that. Um, you can really notice that some people obviously have the entire day, they've got the entire day time to sit in Facebook. And they're looking there, they're watching, they're posting, they're writing. And yeah, when I'm looking at that as a buyer, somebody wants to buy maybe a product from you or your services or anything, I might notice and say, well, hmm, obviously they haven't got anything else to do. So they can't have that much business. It can't be that good if they are sitting all the day in social media and posting stuff. And there's a difference Definitely difference between what you post using tools like Hootsuite and, and Social Sprout and other kind of tools, um, Loomly and so on. There's lots of stuff out there you can use to post your content and your marketing content. But it is a difference if you're posting content or if you're just um, posting comments negative comments or you're involving yourself in drama and that and you obviously haven't got anything else and you just need to pull others down because you are just bored and uh, you may be uh, unsuccessful with your attempts to start a business or even to get it working and even if we've got times where revenue is going down because businesses are going out of 
business. Clients are maybe having sent their employees into home office. Some are maybe even off work because the certain organization units just are not fit to work from home because they haven't got the infrastructure or let's say you've got people who usually would work in in a kind of laboratory environment they can't do uh, tests with explosives or chemicals and so on at home they need to have a proper safe environment and that's the key thing uh, these people if they are at home because of the risk of uh, catching some kind of infection illness or another kind of stuff you can't do business with them and worst thing of course they are not consuming your products your services because let's say you are a supplier of chemicals or you supply them anything from protective goods and other kind of stuff that they use or chemicals um, operational fluids and so on if the factory isn't producing any goods you don't need oil for the machinery or you don't need spare parts for the for the soldering robots. Yeah, because they're not doing anything. There are no parts being delivered. Or you don't need any cleaning services because the offices are not being used. And instead of doing it once a day, maybe the cleaning services just needed once a week just to keep the dust away. But there's nobody sitting in there the entire week. So it's a waste of resources and the companies will be aware of it and they'll start cutting costs in that area unless they haven't done it already totally so uh, you have to be really focused on what you're doing focus your energy and that is so important it brings us actually to the first core message of this episode social media is a big distraction for us entrepreneurs so you need to cut out the noise. And with the noise, I mean all the garbage that's being posted. People are posting stuff that they say this is a pandemic. The other ones are saying we're all going to die. The other ones say it's all fake, fake news and, and garbage. And uh, we have our rights to civil rights and this and that and so on. Another one is writing garbage about the other one and all the political disagreements and so on, social disagreements, Um it's just crazy because you, you read so much garbage and then you've got the, the people who are trying to scam other people again and uh, and you want to stay out of that because it's not, not good and it's going to mess up your mindset. It's going to confuse you and that's something you definitely don't want. You need focus and that's the challenging thing. Even if you're maybe working from home now unexpectedly you have maybe your kid at home who's playing maybe lego and uh, wants to have your attention at the same time you're doing trying to do something and then the kid comes and is hungry and wants to have something yeah and even if you're a couple and both are working and you're working from home one in the other room one in the other room it becomes a little bit of a challenge and even if you haven't got kids and even if you're single it's a challenge enough because you have other thoughts in your mind that are distracting you you maybe think oh, i want to play games and so on or for instance i, I take my flight simulator and, and uh, exercise landing with the c172 in a certain um, airport and that yeah that, that's a great thing but i don't want to do that during the day i want to focus my work and whether i'm doing a podcast or i'm reading a book for instance i've got here on my desk two different books um, one was on negotiation, the other one is on C Sharp 8 and .NET Core 3 projects using Azure. Yep. Yeah. There's plenty of stuff to do and it's um, always good to have as well tidiness as well on your desk. And yes, some of us need several monitors. We may need some different kinds of equipment, but maybe several keyboards. We might even have a mug full of pens or, or anything and several mouse, computer mouses standing around, sheet of paper, maybe a notepad or anything. And uh, yeah, it's all as well a distraction, but we try to keep it as tidy and clean. But if we are not doing the same with our mindset, because we are letting garbage in, especially from social media. And when I look at it, Facebook is a really... A very good place to collect that kind of garbage unfortunately 
because people are just posting everything and it doesn't matter if they just post uh, pictures or some kind of videos. Even in the video section of, of uh, Facebook, there's so much garbage and some of the stuff is even just horrible to watch. It's untasteful and, and when you think of it, somebody at Facebook has to try to filter out all that garbage and all those horrible videos that are being uploaded. It's a terrible kind of work for them. Yeah, and, and some of the stuff is so tasteless that yeah <laughs> it's a difficult thing of saying whether you should have censorship or not the thing is who decides what's nice who decides not is nice or what's garbage and what's not garbage everybody's taste is different but the core thing is you have to focus on what's really important for you and those videos are not important for you all those social media posts are not important to you if somebody is just posting that they are just having a, a barbecue party or um, they are hating on somebody who is just writing some other garbage, you don't want to join trolls who are feeding negativity because negativity comes for one reason in social media especially because some people then eventually think they can hide in social media and they can write the worst stuff that they can. But the thing is, Often, you just need a few clicks and you can actually find out more about the person. And some of these per people are even so silly that they even have, and that's the funny thing, have even written the company names where they are working. So if you know the HR person of that company and you go and tell them what this person is writing garbage, they'll be very, very annoyed that this person is actually putting garbage and connecting it with their company name because their brand is, is maybe important and maybe you, maybe a good client who buys uh, from them products on a regular basis or uh, you are maybe a marketing partner or you are any kind of connection that is important to them and they feel embarrassed about this person who is behaving la rather badly. But the thing is, don't let that affect you just keep those trolls, those negative haters outside of your hemisphere and focus on your business. That's why it is so important to cut out that noise. Stay out of social media, at least during your work hours. Keep out there. Yeah, because that's when you're not going to. And now look, for instance, what are other people doing? What are the top successful entrepreneurs doing? Where are they? Are they on Facebook? Um, not really, not really. They have somebody, of course, who's posting stuff for them. But in reality, yeah, look, even at prime ministers and ministers and, and presidents and so on, they're not posting stuff on Facebook or on Instagram. Yes, they are a different kind of age group. Yes, you could, of course, argument on that. But they are focused on their duties and now in between, when they feel like it, sometimes some people feel a lot like it, they go and post stuff on Twitter. Hmm, exactly. They don't even go and post it on LinkedIn. So you see, uh, there's a big difference between these different kinds of platforms. And it, it really makes you think whether you are actually wasting your time if you are zapping all the time, this and that. And yes, TikTok can be as well quite an entertaining thing. And I sometimes look at TikTok too and in the evenings and I enjoy looking at these videos of uh, pilots landing and other people doing some funny stuff on that. That's quite nice. But um, 10, 20 minutes of it, that's totally enough and you're out. Yeah, that's enough. Um, you don't want to make it to a addiction because otherwise you are stuck in it all day, morning to the evening, just watching and zapping and zapping and zapping. And then when there isn't anything else coming, you get annoyed. You don't want that. So keep this kind of social media addiction out of your life. Keep the noise out because you'll always have negativity in there. Plenty of stuff that attracts this kind of um, people. So that will help you to get much more focus in your day. And what else can you do to get focus so that you don't uh, drift into that area is by doing a 
daily list. And I mean a list, for instance, of the things you have to do, the things you want to achieve. And as well, why you want to achieve them. What are your goals, your reasons, what's actually driving you? And then you can use that to recalibrate yourself every day in the morning and in the evening to see, okay, how far have I got actually with what I am doing? Is there something I need to change? Have I achieved everything I want to do? What are things that I thought I have to do and maybe are no longer important? I can remove them from the list. Maybe it's something that's become obsolete because something changed. Let's say something I, did, I said I have to do in order to send out an offer or whatever or a special product specification and then I found out that the lead who wanted to have this feature has gone out of business. I don't need to do that. So I can reduce the noise in that area too. So yeah, that's something that you can really, really do. And that will bring you as well greater strength because you are so focused on it and you reduce the amount of stuff that's actually happening in your life and it's messing you up. Because social media is a big, big problem for many entrepreneurs because they eventually get a depression they're unhappy that maybe sales isn't going, uh, people are not paying the prices that they need to get paid, not selling enough of that quantity and that. And it's, and sometimes you see there's maybe a big competitor who's blasting out every day five, ten emails. They're blasting five posts on social media, five posts on that social media, and this and that and so on. And I think they have maybe 20, 30 people doing all this stuff and I'm just a one-man show. I can't do that. And then you start getting uh, frustrated and depressed because you think, how am I supposed to eventually manage to have a business that has maybe 100 people working for me or 500 or, or 5,000? It is all possible, but the thing is you have to be smart about it and you have to try to focus on it. Don't overspend yourself and especially as well your energy because your energy is to a certain degree limited. At the same time, it doesn't mean that the energy that you have at the moment is the maximum you can get. You have to increase it by doing a variance of activities during the day, whether it's some a bit of going for a walk, doing some sports, jogging in the evening, eating healthier, drinking more water. Um, yeah, sometimes we might need an espresso or coffee or a tea. Yeah, it's absolutely okay. Um, but you have to try to reduce the amount, especially as well, of soda. I love ginger ale, for instance, uh, Canada Dry. When I'm in Canada, <laughs> people keep putting cans of um, Canada Dry in front of me. It's, it's crazy. It's difficult because then sometimes I say, hey, I don't want to drink Canada Dry all day. <laughs> I want something different, a glass of juice or uh, water or anything else, but not soda all the time. And that's the thing. I used to own shares of Coca-Cola. Yes, I had it. And, I, and it was good. It was definitely a good thing to have. At least from an investor side, it was good. And um, when you look at it, um, these brands have high potentials in the long run. But you have to know where to invest at what time and how long to hold them. But um, yeah, how does it actually then help us? So let's have a look at what you could do next. So what do you need to focus the next 18 months in your business so that it will continue to grow instead of being beaten by haters and energy vampires? And energy vampires are, for instance, clients who are actually not really wanting to buy from you. They are saying that they want to buy from you, but they are publicly or towards you giving you a different message. At least from the mouse, you're hearing a message and you believe that, but it's actually not the truth. They don't really want to buy from you. And um, it's not as well in your best interest to sell to them. But you sometimes do tend to get this drive. They think, oh, I need to have the sale. Do you want the sale? That's the best question. Because you shouldn't need it. You should want it. But if you need it, then that's when you get the energy vampires, the haters, and those who want to take advantage of you. They want to buy it from you, 
whether it's a product or service, and later on return it. Used, broken, and cash in the entire money. So it's it's like um, it's like using a rent a, uh, rented car and then actually not paying for it. And you come with excuses, complaints, and all these things, and, and it generates a lot of negativity just to make you break down to give them the money back or, or not to charge them for the service and all these things. These are different kinds of negotiation tactics that some use. I'll be talking about that in some future, how you can deal with that. But um, at the moment, our core f- focus is on what you want to do in the next 18 months. And why? Because in 18 months, we will have to expect quite a turbulence on the markets, uh, in the industries, travel, sales. And it doesn't matter whether you are in B2C, whether you're in B2B, B2 government, you are doing e-commerce, you had maybe a retail shop and you closed it, it doesn't matter. Even if you are um, not actively selling products, but you still need cash flow for what you're doing, whether you're a startup, a fintech, or an NGO, it doesn't matter. Money is what usually people say drives the world. It, It makes the world go around. Yes, to a certain degree, but of course, visions do it too, and visions are the long, longer lasting. But there is a surplus of money on the markets at the right place. If we are letting haters and energy vampires into our world, and that's what we get as well from all that noise that we have as well in social media and other places, we will have quite some issues to deal with. So... What do we focus on? We focus on building. We focus on building client bases, visibility, revenue. That's going to be a long-lasting thing. We don't want to do the quick sale where we think, okay, we have a quick sale, we've done it, and that's it. We want to really build value, build trust, and use the time to do that. But we're not doing it by just pushing out something out there and and not taking care to do it properly without having the mind, the thought behind it, the strategy and knowing what is actually vital and in what context we want to give it. And yes, there's stuff out there that you don't really want to have out there. Nevertheless, you have to think, how can I really get my business to grow? And even if I haven't got any revenue now, I have to use the next six months to get whatever ever I'm working on, get it ready. In six months, you want to start a thing being sold, highly focused on one market, I mean one industry in the market, and get that done properly. And only focus on that one niche and do it. And nothing else. Don't let yourself be distracted to other kind of stuff. And if you believe your business is still working well, you you believe that your industry has high potential because it always worked and it's always worked and it's always been that way the last five years, 10 years, 100 years. It doesn't matter. You just need one disruptive element coming in and you are out of business as fast as you can't even see or even say T42, that's so fast happening. So when we break the next 18 months into six months brackets, we have some big, big focus areas that we have to focus. So we build in the next six months, then we start selling in the next six months. And then after those, no, two by two, so after the, 12 months have passed, looking from today on, then we will expand. And you think, okay, how can I expand when it's currently an economic crisis coming up, people are getting ill, get dying, companies are shutting down, going out of business, people, people are losing their jobs, consumers are maybe consuming stuff in a totally different way they're not going to shops are they're doing this and that and certain businesses are maybe even uh, reducing the expenses because they don't know how things will turn 
because maybe habits of consumers and buyers and by buyers i mean those who are in businesses and make bis business decisions to buy a product or a service from a different company and that means as well at the same time are they going to hire people what kind of people are they going to hire are they going to retrain people who maybe have no longer need uh, to produce or deliver a certain kind of services inside that organization But when you look at it from the perspective of an entrepreneur, we have 18 months cut in three sections of six months. And that's where we have to look now <clears throat> and focus on these things. But I'll be talking about more in detail uh, in the next uh, few episodes about um, how you can really then go down and break it up until you have an entire 18-month plan broken into uh, six weeks sections or four week sections depending on how you want to do it but uh, you have to be realistic as well that when you do your work you might have to go from a perspective of a project management perspective break it down have your understandings that certain things take longer certain things are bottlenecks in the tasks because if you haven't got that done you cannot do anything else so you have to get that fixed but maybe that bottleneck affect certain tasks and others not so you have to find ways to live with it bypass it and still eventually more or less reach your targets at a certain time that you've set yourself and at a certain time where the market demands for you to actually be ready and that's the key thing six months six months six months we're talking about 18 months broken into three sections and you will have to be then ready and even if you've got a product already and it's already being sold you have to rethink how you are going to rebuild adapt the product and what it is going to affect in your business do you have to reorganize restructure is your accounting department up to the requirements of the business of the next 18 months can they deliver proper numbers that you can work from home can the accounting team handle the invoices that are coming in the right way can you avoid getting defrauded by maybe fake emails or fake invoices coming or wrong invoice amounts and so on it doesn't help you if you've got a wrong invoice amount and you're supposed to pay let's say $35,000 for some kind of service and you actually don't know that they actually only delivered a service or product or shipment that represents instead of $35,000 only $28,000. But you don't know that. And it doesn't automatically mean that the other person had a bad intention towards you. Maybe it's a mistake. Somebody forgot to add five boxes to their whole shipment or uh, the lorry driver forgot to unload his truck with two more cases delivered them at the wrong address and nobody noticed yeah somewhere else maybe somebody thinking okay why am i supposed to pay here twelve thousand dollars for 10 boxes when the guy actually delivered me 14 boxes uh, i didn't order 14 boxes okay i have to store them yeah but it's did, did i get a discount or i don't quite get this and starts getting confused so you have then eventually maybe two clients who have a problem or a supplier that has a big problem because he has got two clients to deal with who are confused or not yet visibly confused about what's happening so try to put your energy on your business keep your nose out of social media during the day Work hours are work hours. In the morning, mind feeding. Read a good book that's not Harry Potter or this other kind of stuff. That is a waste of time. You are no longer a kid. An adult, focus your time on business. Read business books. Listen to business podcasts. Educate yourself. 
And I don't mean going into YouTube and watching endless videos about some kind of garbage and other stuff. And from there you go into the next thing and follow 20 gurus and think, yes, I'm going to do this and this and I'll do now multi-level and that and then I'll be a multi-millionaire. That's garbage. As one very successful entrepreneur once said to me, and he has a net value of, I think, half a billion dollars. Multi-level marketing is the fake gold of the poor man. At that time, wow, that really hit me. Because it's really, really impactful when you think you're driving through London um, in his Porsche and he tells you that wisdom and think that guy knows how to do business. He's built his business at that value. He's got over a thousand employees distributed around the world and he knows that that should make you think what is really important and what's going to just uh, derail your ideas so focus on your business no negativity no haters in your world no social media noise only use and focus on those things that are productive and yeah There'll always be some people, even if you have a lot of range of people who are on your social media who are just posting garbage all the time and posting, oh, how they're great, having a great time, having barbecues all the time. Do you really need to watch that? Think of it. Or some people who are putting, posting horrible images and videos on their social media uh, feed um, and that kind of horrible stuff, then you should think, do I need this person in my life? Or do I at least want to unfollow them so I don't get confronted with this garbage every day? Because just because this negativity, this noise, this mess and, and garbage that is in their life, it doesn't mean it has to be in your life because it's not going to help you. For this person who's posting this garbage, they don't care about you. They're not interested whether you want to reach a certain level, whether you want to build your business or increase your business or save the, the jobs, the 20 jobs in your company because you have a certain responsibility towards yourself, your family, your employees and their families as well and your clients and your suppliers and their families and so on. They don't care. So keep out of that garbage. Do not waste your time during the day in social media and by social media i mean clearly facebook instagram tiktok linkedin all this kind of stuff it is an entire distraction and it's going to keep you off your business instead of getting you to work on your business get that done and i hope you will be enjoying the next episodes um and I think the topics we've already got, I'll let you know what's coming next. Stay tuned here. The next part of this podcast is coming now. I hope this was informative for you. It gave you some ideas and things to think about. But uh, let's look at what we'll be talking about next episode. And that will be 
how to negotiate with buyers a better selling price. We'll be looking at why it is more important to negotiate than to go for the quick close. Recognize as well what makes your product a better fit that is worth paying more. And that will finalize then as well with the key thing before we go into deeper thoughts. Even with fixed prices, you are in negotiation. Well, that's all for today's episode of The Growth Zone. Thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Spotify so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you haven't got your signed copy of the marketing book, stop by on our website at book.prmediareach.com and hurry because the reserve batch of signed books are almost sold out. So, the address is bookprmediareach.com. I'll repeat, bookprmediareach.com. <laughs>